Hello again. Thank you for tuning into the third chapter and episode 3.1 of our video series Parallel Programming and Optimization with Intel Xeon Phi coprocessors. In this chapter, we'll show basic principles of interacting with Intel Xeon Phi coprocessors. And during this video episode, we will do a brief overview of programming models available for MIC architecture. Our goal in this part of the course is to learn how to just run something on Intel Xeon Phi coprocessors, not necessarily in parallel and not necessarily optimally. Later in the course, we will discuss parallelism and optimization in great detail. The programming models for utilizing the Xeon Phi can be divided into two groups – offload models and native models. The main difference between the two is where the initial program is executed. In the offload model, the executable resides on the host and only portions of the code and data are offloaded to the Xeon Phi coprocessor. In the native model, the program is executed completely on the Xeon Phi coprocessor. The Xeon processor does not participate in program execution. Let's briefly take a look at how the two models appear in C++ code. This code snippet, details of which will be discussed in the following episode, shows the usage of one of the offload models called explicit offload. In the explicit offload model, the execution is carried out on the host processor until the directive, pragma float target mic, is encountered. At this point, the compiler will implement communication with coprocessor driver so that all code instructions within the scope of this pragma will be offloaded to the Xeon Phi coprocessors. Host CPU will stall at this point during the application run. After the pragma, the application will return to host execution. Explicit offload is only one of the APIs available for offload. Other offload APIs include the target directive in OpenMP 4.0 and virtual shared memory model, which is similar to the explicit offload model. We will discuss explicit offload and virtual shared memory model in subsequent episodes. This code snippet shows the native execution model. In the native execution model, the execution of all functions, including main, is carried out on Xeon Phi coprocessor. Note that in this case, the high-level language code for the MIC architecture looks just like a regular application for Xeon processor. However, recall that the executable is not binary compatible between the CPU and current many-core architecture. So, if you want to compile the C, C++ or Fortran code for a CPU-based system and for a coprocessor, you will need to produce two different executables. The reason why both native and offload programming models are available with Intel Xeon Phi coprocessors is that the software stack, MPSS, has two channels for communicating with operating system running on coprocessors. This diagram shows the details of the interactions between the host and coprocessor in the native and offload models. Let's take a look at how native execution works. When MPSS is started, it loads the image of the Linux operating system MUOS onto coprocessors. The operating system on coprocessors enables TCP IP networking between the host and coprocessor. It also starts additional network services, such as the secure shell or SSH daemon. In essence, MPSS creates a virtual network that looks like a TCP IP Ethernet network but operates across the PCIe interface. So the user can use SSH to start a terminal session with the coprocessor and run the native executable on the coprocessor, just as if the Xeon Phi was a remote compute node. Any libraries used by the application such as C standard library or the OpenMP runtime library must be present on the coprocessor's file system in this case and their allocation should be known for the operating system MUOS environment. For the offload model, a different channel of communication with coprocessor is employed. This channel is provided by the offload runtime libraries, two on both sides, one on the host and one on the coprocessor, which are managed by MPSS. When an application that runs on the host calls for offload, the runtime library on the host will communicate with the runtime library on the coprocessor and transfer the data and or instructions. The driver that enables this communication is called SCIF, the Symmetric Communication Interface. Typically, programmers do not use SCIF directly, but rely on a compiler-provided API. The compiler instruments operations with a higher-level communication library called COI, C -O -I, which stands for Coprocessing Offload Infrastructure. 
For programmers, one of the most important aspects to note on this diagram is that on the hardware side, all communication happens through the PCIe bus using PCIe Gen 2 standard. This is the case for both the native execution model and offload model. This means that all data transfers between the host and coprocessor are ultimately limited by the latency and the bandwidth of the PCIe bus, which is for second generation is about 6.5 GB per second. We will discuss communication between host and coprocessor in greater detail in later videos. Let's take a look at how this is implemented in practice. First, we will confirm that the coprocessors are visible to the host using LSPCI command. Next, we will check if MPSS service is running. It must be running in order to use Xeon 5 coprocessors. MIC control automatically updates the EDC host's file with the addresses of the mics when MPSS is installed. Let's establish a secure shell or SSH connection with the first coprocessor, which has the host name mic0. LS shows that the file system on the coprocessor, which is loaded at boot by MPSS, has the same structure as any Linux system. So we can see how many logical cores the system has in PROC CPU info, just like other Linux systems. Because this coprocessor is the 7000 series, we see that there are 244 logical cores. This is because the coprocessor has 61 physical cores with 4 hardware threads in each core. The two programming models, native and offload, enable a range of approaches for heterogeneous programming, in other words, for teaming Xeon processors and Xeon 5 coprocessors. This diagram illustrates these approaches. On the left end we have a case labeled multi-core hosted application, which refers to the approach where the application runs entirely on the CPU. This is a reasonable approach for applications that run poorly on Xeon Phi. For example, applications that cannot be parallelized or have high file I.O. rate. Or very complex and stochastic memory access patterns. Those generally run better on multi-core CPUs. Going right, we have the offload approach, where the main application is executed on the host and only some portions of the code are offloaded to Xeon Phi. This is useful, for instance, for applications that have single-threaded phases, which run better on the CPU, with some highly parallel phases, which run better on the coprocessor. Next, we have the symmetric approach, where both the processor and the coprocessor run the same application, but the workload is partitioned between them. This can be implemented either with the native model or with the offload model. This approach works best with applications that scale well on both Xeon processors and Xeon Phi coprocessors. The application may perform better on the Xeon Phi than on a CPU. However, if you already have a powerful CPU in the system, why not use it? This is where the symmetric approach helps. Finally, in some systems, the many-core hosted approach may be used. In this approach, the application runs completely on Xeon Phi coprocessors and the host processor is not used at all. This is useful, for example, in systems where the performance of coprocessors far exceeds the performance of CPUs. For instance, this may be the case in CXP9000, the system with 8 coprocessors, which I mentioned earlier. Not using the CPU has two advantages. First, it simplifies load balancing because a computing platform made up entirely of coprocessors is more homogeneous than a platform that has CPUs and coprocessors. Second, when the CPU is not used for the calculation, it may carry out other tasks such as staging or post-processing data or running other applications. In the next episode, we will talk about arguably the simplest way to port and run your application on Intel Xeon 5 coprocessors, native execution. Thank you, and I hope to see you in the next episode.